Well, when I first joined over here, we did not even have robots in our office. So I did not expect our company would grow this big and like cooperate with OpenAI for the event. So around two weeks before the event uh, of the opening of the Korean office of OpenAI, so OpenAI actually contacted us so that we, they could show off some of how they can use OpenAI's technology to, uh, to the actual audience. We didn't have a lot of time to actually set up the robot. There were limited times to how much we can access, assess the robot and set up the environment. The lighting conditions was pretty important as, well, if the lightning becomes dimmer, the actual images is not easy to be, it's not easy to determine where like the object is from the image itself. So during the training process, we actually have to put in perturbations to the camera images to try to make the models as robust as possible. But we actually never know how much the success rate will be unless we actually go down to the actual venue. Uh, unfortunately, the lighting conditions uh, actually didn't uh, affect the success rate that much. There could be a potential problem during the transportation of the robot. So I used a specific uh, transportation truck so that it reduces the, any vibration that can be moved on to the robot. The vibration actually causes the fasteners to be untightened. So it could be a problem in terms of uh, electrical boards or it could be uh, wrongful to the casings or even the actuator, the holders. So I used uh, those kind of specific truck. There was a little kid. She was very um, happy that she could actually talk to Alex. And when the Alex hand over the gift to her, she was very happy, she was laughing. And it was, for me, it was very memorable for me. I feel like the real world will enable the robots to have that dexterous manipulation, not just in household, but maybe in data centers where the robot has to plug those small uh, cords into the data hubs. Only the humanoids with uh, high dexterous DOF hands can do that.